Stick around to hear more about Zector Lab's selection of high quality 3D models. Alright, hello, and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 5 horror game series, where I figure out different horror game mechanics and share with you guys what I learned along the way. This video, I messed around with chaos physics, blending animations, sequence triggers, and more. We're going to take all of this and use it to make a chase sequence. Let's get into it. First things first, thanks to Zector Lab for reaching out and sponsoring this video with a fantastic 3D model. They've shared this freaky bastard locked and loaded with a ton of animations ready to be used for gameplay purposes. Zector Lab's library of 3D models is constantly growing and being updated, and they really scream quality. I was blown away. This doctor model here came with cloth physics working out of the box along with quite a few animations to work with and blend together. So be sure to hop down in the description and check out Zector Lab's library of 3D models for your next project. Huge thanks to them. This character helped inspire the sequence we're about to put together, so let's get into that. If you are familiar with Resident Evil, you probably recognize the tone I'm going for with all of this. So first thing I went about was making a wall explode with Chaos Physics. Using Unreal Engine's Fracture tools, we can break apart models and blow them up with bombs. Very fun. So I'm going to cut to me live and show you how to get Chaos Physics set up in two minutes or less. We're going to select our model we want to fracture. We're going to go up to Selection and Fracture. We're going to generate a new geometry collection. We're going to call this Chaos uh, Tutorial Geometry Collection. That works. Now we go and select the type of fracture we want. I'm going to go with the cluster. And we're going to scroll down here and hit Fracture. As you can see, this has broken up the model, and you can see a little bit better how it was broken up by adjusting that explode amount. So let's go back to selection mode. I'm happy with this. You can go in here and hide show bone colors to get rid of that. I have it in here, but normally you'd have to go into Engine, Content, Editor Resources, Field Nodes, and this is where you're going to find your bomb. If you are in 5.0, the bomb won't be here, so be sure to update your project. So you take this guy, drag it out and position it somewhere. You can adjust the maximum and minimum scale of it. We're just going to leave this one small for now. And be sure to just tick Use Bomb. You can also set the delay amount right here. As you can see, I've already placed a couple, and now you can go up here and hit simulate. And we're back. Hopping over to the demo level now, I built a new section of laboratory for the sake of this chase sequence. I also did a quick thumbnail sketch beforehand, which you can see on the left here. Once that thumbnail was painted, I used it as a reference for some generative AI to get some more concepts. So here are some quick shots in editor of the new area. With 
with this hallway built up, we can now make one of the walls explode. Just like I did in the demonstration, I create a geometry collection of all the wall segments and fractured them in multiple passes, adding more and more fine detail towards the center with each fracture for a more realistic effect. This is a way to sort of art direct your explosion. You may also notice in the time lapses some yellow boundary volumes. These are found in the same folder where the bomb is, and anything within these boxes will remain unaffected by the simulation. So for added effect, I threw in a red spotlight behind the wall, and that results in this explosion. I think this looks pretty good and it's not crashing the engine, so what's next is we need to track it into sequencer and add in our animated character. Before we hop back into the main level, I'm going to share with you guys how to blend animations and sequencer in a little test scene. Here is that. Alright, let's talk about animation blending. I've got an extra fan going here because I'm trying to not fry my memory sticks. And uh, as such, instead of trying to edit out the wind, I think I'm just going to edit in more wind to uh, make it an immersive experience. But anyways, we're here in this uh, little demo level with our character. I'm just going to show you guys real quick, simple way to blend animations. So we're going to take this guy, we're going to track him into sequencer. Like normal, we can add an animation. In this case, we'll go with an idle. What we can do, we can go to the very last frame of that idle. We can add another animation, let's say the walk. And as you can see, what we've got now is it just snaps to walking in place, which is not what we want. So we're going to right click this, match with bone in previous clip, and go to the pelvis. And now, when you do that, Okay. Say we want to stop it from snapping like that, all you got to do is take this animation and smash it into the previous one. Let's go maybe 20 frames. Works for me. This one's your animations all hooked up. You can actually go right click, and bake animation sequence. I'll save this to my animations folder, we'll call it tutorial sequence. Export to animation sequence. And now, if we go check that out, our tutorial sequence here. As you can see, we now have a new animated sequence. And what we can do there is we can just track that new full sequence and pick up where we left off. I've noticed that when you're trying to blend more than one animation, sometimes it doesn't really want to work with you, so you'll have to bake them into a sequence and then start again. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let me go back to here, add an animation, the alert, there we go. And then we will go match the bone in previous clip, pelvis. And that is the basis of blending animations. So. I took this idea and applied it to creating a chase sequence in the main level. Here's the time lapse of that. Yep, like I just mentioned there, I took the animation blending process and applied it to a level sequence in the main scene. It took a bit of trial and error to get the animations to blend smoothly and get the character to move in a direction that I wanted. I was struggling to get the character to turn naturally without the animation sliding all over the place. My brain cells started working, I think I know how to do this now. Power, keyframe, and transforming. So to pull it off without sliding, I brute forced keyframe to slight rotation on each step as he rounds the corner here. This results in some drifting, but it ultimately paid off. If you know of a better way to control the direction of animations like this, definitely let me know down in the comments.
for a final addition, I threw a spotlight onto the head mirror thing the doctor's wearing for some extra effect. And with our animation all combined and explosion finished, we have a pretty much finished level sequence. For now, off camera, I've tracked a death trigger I put together in a previous video along a path to move with the doctor. In the future, I'd like to figure out how to actually trigger attack animations and such, but for the purpose of this chase sequence, it'll do. All that's left now is to trigger it in-game. Okay, we're going to make a trigger blueprint. Start by creating a new blueprint actor, and under the components tab, add a collision cube. Under this event graph, from event actor begin overlap, drag out and add in a create level sequence player node. Within that, select the sequence you want to play. From there, connect up a play sequence player node to the create level sequence player, and connect the out actor pin to the sequence player target like so. Yeah, stay with me here. Almost there. Moving on from the play node, connect up a delay node, which should be set to the length of the sequence, and then that delay node hooks up into a pause node, which is also connected back to the out actor pin of the create level sequence player. Alright, compile, save, and drag that trigger into the scene, and we've got a finished sequence. So that's that. I'm pretty dang happy with the results here. Knowing how to trigger sequences is just a generally useful thing to know with tons of gameplay applications for future projects. Plus, finally working with Chaos Physics was a blast. Lots of good things cooking up here, so I hope you found something useful or received some inspiration throughout the process. Thank you all for watching and for all the support here on the channel. Be sure to hit the like button to see more creative content coming soon.